What's up, family? What's up? What's Brother Hot Tim. We're running late as usual. But A, it's up. We up. We popping. We're about to get this music started so that I can do the other stuff. So y'all get ready. Because the journey is What's on line. Oh my god, turn the turn the mic, turn it off please. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so embarrassing. Turn off the Bluetooth, please. Oh What's up? This is Jackie. What's up, Jack? Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's start over. Oh my god, just turn it down. It's about to go down, family. Come on down. We're setting up to YouTube right now. Shock up on that. Oh, we about to do it. Oh, let's get it. Let's get it. Time to go. It's going down. Hashtag my dad lazy. Go to bed, little girl. Go to bed. Little girl, I just said go to bed. It's real life here, Jeremy Journey. about to open up. I know I got some people waiting to get online. Family. Family, family. Let me just let me just give you a quick update of why Brother Hot Tim is late. Brother Hot Tim is late because we was having a meeting. I had a meeting. 
you know, uh, the Nation Builder variety. I can't go too much in depth into it. But family, I am telling you, I am telling you, we are about to do some big shit here in Columbus. Some big stuff in Columbus. Um, and like I said, we're going to need some of y'all help. We're going to need some of y'all to be coming in and helping us build. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Um, you know, I mean, with this energy that's going out about with this Black Panther movie, you know what I'm saying? Once again, we have an opportunity to do some big, big things, right? So one of the things we, we're going to be building up is the component of, of nation building, where we're starting to initiate the uh, warriors and the nation builders and even some elders into our circle. We have to start opening it up. It's very, very, very important. Now, uh, I want to read a text that was sent to me by uh, one of our good brothers, the unsleeping one, Brother Nubis. I just have to go on and pull it up. Um, Y'all going to hear ringing real quick because I am right now opening up the lines for those that want to join. Uh, the text just went out for those that's on uh, Tribal Quotes. You are the first participant on the call. Please hold while we wait the for the lines are open. The lines are now officially open, family. Y'all can call in. But I want to go and get this post by Brother... And, and of course, you know, because uh, 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 among the many experts that we have in Giami Journey... On um, Jeremy, one of my daily toasters is not only a cryptocurrency expert, um, not only an investment expert, but he's also a comic book devotee, right? And he sent me a message, and it's kind of it's kind of concerning because for a lot of us, the Black this Panther call is being recorded. For a lot of us, the Black Panther was the shit, right? The movie was great to see the movie come to life. It's great to see the character come to life. But now we are facing questions like this one I'm going to read right now. Because I know y'all have heard a lot of stuff and, and those of you that's in yeah I can hear you. Um, the ones that's in the chat the ones that's, that's in the Giami Journey chat not the, not, not the page but the group. The ones that's in the Giami Journey group right? You know I, I'm, I'm posting up quotes from some of uh, uh, some of our history's greatest kings right and, 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 and people and the quotes that they made. Now I posted up a quote from a brother who's actually because the dude that produced the, the, the music that y'all listen to name is Mansour and this dude's last name is Mansour and some of the shit that he said as he was in battle. Some of the things that our ancient comedic ancestors said when they was in battle. And some of the quotes that they said about war. Because I need some of y'all that's out there talking about extreme. Talking about extremes. Those of us that's talking about extremes, you may have never been in battle. Because there's nothing more extreme than actually being in battle. But, um, Brother Nubis... Send me a text, and I want to read the text. It's about to pop up. Shaka, you there? Because I'm hearing a lot of clicking. Yeah, I'm here. All right, cool. I'm My hearing, bad. I, oh, ain't no problem. You know what I'm saying? I just appreciate you being there. Shaka was one of the ones that called me like, man, what the hell going on? We supposed to be having the, he, he, you know, he, he is now, we supposed to be having the show. I'm about to start the show. I'm about to start the show. So if you, you know what I'm saying, you can tune in if you want to. But we about to have a show. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what we need because it's like because when when sometimes some of us we, we're doing stuff, we need our fellow builders. We need our family to be like, look, dude, you can't do it right now. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because he's an editor on here. And he could be like, shit, he could set, set up a stream and just go on. But, you know, I'm arrogant. I'm like, ah, now I'll be home in a, in a couple minutes. But uh, here we go. Brother uh, Anubis says, 
Hey brother, you know I was thinking about our new favorite topic and Killmonger's death holds even more meaning for me, at least after seeing it for the sixth time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, when I say he's a, listen, this is somebody that when I throw out comic books, if I'm not precise, he coming, Right? Because I'm really, that's what we need. We need individuals that take something seriously, family. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? We have to become masters. And masters take things very seriously. You know what I'm saying? When somebody is, is, is treading on your craft, it's like if I was to go over Shaka's house and, and, and start organ grinding on his shit, he, he might throw me out the house. Brother Hatim, pushing the key. First off, you're making all that noise. you pushing my key. Get the hell out of my house. You know what I'm saying? We got the it's certain things that we do that we have to, in a sense, lay down our boundaries. All right? Um, and once again, he says, after my sixth time, because not only will he be, uh, my fault, Killmonger's death hold even more meaning for me, at least after seeing it for the sixth time, because not only will he be part of the ancestral plane, but remember, he did become a Black Panther. And so if T'Challa even thinks for a moment that that's the last he has seen of him, then he is going to be in for a huge surprise and a rude awakening. Um, and a rude awakening. And if the story group is even remotely thinking on the same line as I am, then T'Challa is definitely going to have to, a lot more questions about his beliefs and life choices that he is going to be making a move forward. Also, what kind of man was T'Challa overall besides besides to you? Not wanting at first to help out the wider world. He Was he really a good man? But most of all, was he the ideal black man? See... The beautiful thing about stories, the beautiful thing about movies is that it it raises questions. Not only about the, the movie itself, but it raises questions about what is an ideal black man. What is what is the ideal? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, it raises, it stirs something up in you. It makes people mad. I don't, I, I, I've been listening. Man, you know what? I'm to, starting to believe that, that the ideal black man... Is an anti-villain. Oh, see, but it, now you have to think about that. In white supremacy, what else could an ideal black man be? You know what I'm saying? I mean, for white supremacy, the ideal black man is somebody that is kind and compromising and 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 willing to get along and to do with it. You know what I'm saying? But the opposite of that is what we need. You understand what I'm saying? I put a quote on here on my timeline from a, a king. I'm on, let me, I got to find it. I got I to go to my group. I got to go to the group. And I'm going to read this quote. This motherfucker was cold, right? This dude rolled up into Spain and Portugal and was killing and... and and bringing back motherfuckers and selling them into slavery. You know what I'm saying? The type of shit that we say that our enemy was doing. But you, we got to realize these motherfuckers learned it from somebody. All right. Um, let's uh, family group. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, here we go with all. Man, why can't I just go to? Why can't I just go to my group? I just, I just want to go to Giami Journey. I can't. It's about. I belong to about a hundred different groups, and I can't. Man, find you got. With Facebook, Facebook get real finicky. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you something. I think that they know what we're doing better than ever. well. Put it like this: I think that they slow the process down on purpose. <laughs> hey, you laughing? I was, you laughing? But hey. I was just on here. Yeah, yeah, I was just on here under uh, Sinyami Journey, and I realized I can't even pull from my uh, from my contacts from my friends unless I know their full name. Ain't that something? And, that's, and, and, and we can't and we can't message from group from the group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So here we yep. go. Here is a quote from Yaqub uh, Al Mansur. 
His name means the invincible. I got this off of the home team black history page. Nothing, ex nothing exhales so sweet an odor as the dead body of an enemy and especially a traitor. He, mm. he ain't talk, he ain't talking balance. That shit is extreme, right? This is one of the, mm -hmm. this is one of the rulers from our history. You know what I'm saying? But let me go and read some of these, and then we're gonna get into it. Um, get your intelligence and you. Oh, she was talking to Sasha. Whose music are you playing? That is uh, Brother Mansoor, also known as Mr. Deity. Now you know I'm never up early in the morning. That's Miss Jackie telling on herself. I think that's Miss Jackie. Um, shouts out to CeeLo. Shouts out to Brother Shaka. Uh, who else is on? We got some other people up on the line. Um, Sister CeeLo says, I took a different message. In that having seen the rest of Africa raided, raped, and pillaged, I saw his action as being protective of what they had. And but they had see, and this is what we got to be because of course you know we're talking about a movie. I need to stress that. But what they had was a game changer. They got vibranium. Listen, listen. Warmonger was sending or Killmonger or whatever the brother name. He was sending spears out. Spears using vibranium. He wasn't sitting out with laser guns. He he had a game changer. And they had a game changer. They were sitting on it for hundreds of years. And they refused to allow any of it to be used for the black struggle. If you remember the scene, because I need y'all to go back to the scene. before, Because I'm about to break out the proper. But I want y'all to go back to the scene when he killed his brother the second time. Now, the first time I didn't see. The second time. The brother told him, I see how we suffer all over the world. He saw how we suffer. And he felt that what he was doing was the right thing. But um, CeeLo said, yes, but you know what's going to happen once the... See, now, but this is the problem, this is the issue. They have been hidden so long. Isolated so long. That it'll be hard for people to get to them. And even if you read the comic books and you look at the defenses that, that they have around them, you can't get into Wakanda. Now, they refuse to help us. So my question is, are they us? You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, rather than sharing first with Africa, he go to the UN. And he shares with them. And we know how that pecking order works. It starts at the top, and it trickles down. We already been suffering from trickle down economics. We don't need trickle down vibranium either. You know what I'm saying? Um, yes, but I know um, they don't come to share. They come to take over. Exactly. That's my point. He needed to. He needed well, see, to this is what I don't understand. Then go ahead. I understand. See, vibranium. It also uh, um, represents. Tradition. I was watching a, 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 a video that uh, CeeLo put up about the, I think it was CeeLo that put it up about the director's cut. And he was explaining that one scene, that fight scene, um, even down to the point where the three operatives that went into the, the place where the fight started, uh, uh, in the sister threw a wig, how their outfit, their attire even was symbolic of Pan Africa because you had. Uh, T'Challa wearing black, uh, homegirl wearing red, and the other one wearing green. So, in, in that, he said that the reason she, she uses the, the, uh, the spear is because it's a traditional weapon against, uh, you know, technology. Or, so it's tradition versus, uh, technology. If I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if you watched that. I, I, I haven't but, uh, watched that one. I haven't watched that one. But I'm gonna say this. Flag. No flag. There is no help for your black ass from Wakanda. That's all I'm saying. They will go and help the Europeans first. Period. Period. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? They opened up more. They were they were more welcoming to a white CIA operative than they were to you. 
You see how happy his little sister was to be able to work on another white man? Give me a break. Now, I, but I... I well, wanna... you know what? Uh, once again, a after reviewing that part, Hashem, I gotta say, she was because he, he, he took a bullet for her. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the little sister. But then again, even though he took a bullet, listen, listen to me. Even though he took a bullet, she was the one that went out into the world and said that Wakanda needed to open up the borders and they just seen all the shit. It didn't bother her one bit that all over the world, everywhere she go, as a black person, the world was looking at a way to, to take, I mean, she, she obviously never had no experience like we had. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand, you know, a, a, a white CIA operative need to say, take a couple bullets for me too. God damn it, you owe me. God damn it. Take some bullets and send my goddamn check. You understand what I'm saying? They should have been talking about right. that motherfucker about getting into that CIA budget and getting some of that block operative money and, and, and funneling that shit into our community. But you know, that's, you know, I'm just talking about a movie. That's the MCA, MCU universe. So in the MCU in the uh -huh. universe, they might not even have slavery, slavery for all we know. So I, you know, I, I'm sorry. All right. Um, Sister Chris is saying he needs to target aid to other Africans, not everyone. And that's my problem. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got, we got T'Challa, the, the, the richest man. In DC and Marvel universes, I mean, they already did the numbers. Richest man is black. Got the most technologically advanced country in the world, and he extends no help to black folks. But he goes to the um, uh, UN. And all these European countries, because the ones that he was talking to that were sitting up front was European countries. And offer them all. But he comes to the ghetto and he give us three buildings. You got that building over there, that building over there, that building over there. Now park the spaceship right down in the middle of the basketball court so the little Negroes can know how great we are as Wakandans. <laughs> Fuck Wakanda. Down with Wakanda. I'm I'm so mad right now. Down with I hope Thanos come and stick his foot in the middle of that shit and crush that shit. I hope the Hawk and Thanos get in a fight and tear that motherfucker up. How about that? Now, that's how I feel. I'm mad. Now I'm just joking. Well, I ain't joking. I doubt Thanos gonna tear that shit up. Alright. See, that's why we can't have shit. <laughs> Disney wasn't even thinking about that alternate ending until you just said it. Hey. Hey, well, I, you know, hey. Disney, cut my goddamn check. How about that? You know what I'm saying? Chaka, man, you've been struggling a long time. These motherfuckers, they owe us. I want some money. You know what I'm saying? Hell, for all you know, because you ain't even heard the soundtrack for that movie, they might have stole some of your goddamn music. How about that? You know what? You're right. And then, You're absolutely right. Then I'm gonna say I this. Kendrick, he, oh. I think Kendrick Lamar been on my Facebook page, yo. <laughs> Anuba says, "Praise be to Lord Thanos." <laughs> <laughs> tear one, car, tear that shit up, right? Um, yeah, man. Um, yeah, but that's enough of that. Let's get into these proverbs real quick, so we could go. We only got to do two because we did one just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's a repeat. I want to remind everybody to be sure to join us for the, the Daily Toast. I want to send shots out to all my Daily Toasters like CeeLo, like Anubis, like um, Brother Shaka. Um, if I, I, um, I don't know. I don't know who else is on here. Let's see who else is on here. It's two other people on Kwame here. Kwame on here yet? Kwame, Kwame might not be on it because Kwame was on a um, call with us. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it ran uh, kind of late. Navita, I don't think Navita on here, but she might be. If Navita, if you on there, throw a thumb up or something. But let's get to these proverbs. Y'all ready to get to the proverbs? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Day 17. When minds are the same, that which is far off will come. That's from East Africa. 
number Miss Navita is up. Proverb <laughs> number two. An intelligent mind is an inquiring mind. It is not satisfied with explanations, with conclusions, nor is it a mind that believes, because belief is again another form of conclusion. That's Bruce Lee. Navita just said she on here. Shouts out to Brother Anubis. He in a, he's in the house. Did you just do a Bruce Lee quote? That's a Bruce Lee quote. Yeah, he's he's in the book. I mean, dude, I got I pulled from everything. You know what I'm saying? Where I find wisdom, I'm grabbing. I don't give a fuck whose mouth it come out of. If it makes sense and I'm able to I'm able to use it, I'm going to use it. So once again, we're gonna go through the two. When minds are the same, that which is far off will come. That's from East Africa. Number two, an intelligent mind is an inquiring mind. It is not satisfied with explanations, with conclusions, nor is it a mind that believes, because belief is, again, another form of conclusion. Yo, I jump on number two all day long. You know that. Well, go on. You're just a Bruce Lee fan. Go ahead. I heard, hey, man, you, I, I, I heard you quote him this morning. Ah, you did all right, man. You kind of messed up on it just a little bit, but you did all right, man. You do the you. Yeah. You good on the impressions, though. You good on those impressions and shit. Yeah. Right on, right on. Well, thank you very much. All right, so this one, this one brings to mind something that uh that I hear from elders a lot of times. Uh, well, not a lot, but but anyway, it, it, it directly correlates with the fact that. When you uh, when you too grown to learn, mm. you start dying. Mm. Mm. Huh? Mm. Mm. Somebody, somebody, somebody online. Yeah. Yeah, this is Swab Gotti and Days One who went to school with Shock Osbury. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> What's going on? on? Yeah, you know, you he said you remember him as Nigel Hawkins, though. Yeah, Talise yeah Talise I know Talise. Nigel Hawkins. That's Talise Cuz. All right, I know. I know where you live at. You are, you right over there. Yep. Yeah. How come we ain't never Yeah, right over there, there, son. Listen, 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 listen. See, these are my Cleveland people just calling in on the line. But let me introduce them right quick because he just opened up with a proverb. And I want y'all to, uh, yo, Suave, this is what you great at, man. This is what you great at. Brother Hatim, Suave Gotti. Wild Gotti, and then we got uh, uh, Nigel Hawkins on the line. Hi, Tim. Yes, sir. Let me, let me, let me break this down for him right quick. Wild, on Thursday nights when we do this, we break down Proverbs, just like, you know, your Monday and Wednesday and Friday thing be happening. So I just wanted to, to, right. to get a little bit of your flavor. And, and actually, perfect timing, because he just did a Bruce Lee quote. And I was just about to go all the way in. And then you jumped on the line, so it, everything happened for a reason. Hi, Tim, can you repeat the quote, please? The quote that we're working on right now. An intelligent mind is an inquiring mind. It is not satisfied with explanations, with conclusions, nor is it a mind that believes, because belief is, again, another form of conclusion. Bruce Lee. Okay. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Now, I'm, I'm using the te telephone as a speaker, and I and I got I think I got most of it. Some of it kind of went out a little bit, but I, in the beginning, I, I was I was said something about it. Said an inquiring mind is a is what is it a great mind? It's a what is it? An intelligent mind is an inquiring it's, mind. Yeah, an intelligent mind is an, an inquiring mind. And then it said at the end it says something about belief is is what another form of conclusion. Another form of conclusion. And that's where we y'all y'all want to go to kind of like where pick the pick the brains of uh of, yes, yes. of what right. Bruce Lee from what Bruce Lee was talking about with that here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's called Tribal hey, Quotes. Do you, do you want to hear it one more time? Yeah, let me hear it one more time. 
An intelligent mind is an inquiring mind. It is not satisfied with explanations, with conclusions, nor is it a mind that believes, because belief is again another form of conclusion. Okay. Well, I see. I see where. Uh, I see where Bruce was going with that. I do see where Bruce was going with that. Who gonna hit it first? I also. I also. I also would like to say that. That. I look at a lot of things as. When you look at your own experience, whenever you hear a quote. You, one must always reflect on one's own experience to to connect to the quote. Mm -hmm. So that's really what all quotes is. You know, all all great quotes. One must see how their connective their connectivity is to the quote according to the experiences that you previously have have had. So it's not really asking for your imagination as much as it is asking for you to remember an experience that will be close to what this quote is, is stating and seeing how you and what Bruce Lee was saying are, uh, you know, are you like one with what Bruce was at when he made that quote? Now, now, Bob, let me... Let let me yeah. just say, the one point that I had made about the quote is um, what, it, what it brought up to me was the fact that when you stop learning, you stop growing. When you stop growing, no, but, you, start, you begin to die. Well, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I put a quote out there today, a personal quote. And my personal quote was, misery follows around. around. <laughs> I said, I put the quote was, misery follows around every man who, who claims to know enough, but none of, the, none of it is, none of it is working. So, in that quote, by saying that, you know, misery follows around a man who claims to know enough, but none of it is working. Hold on, that just kind of loud in my back. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me switch my phone from speaker phone to regular. Hold on. All right. So, with that being said, going back to you know thinking about what you just said, what what Bruce just said, and what I was saying by the uh, by the quote that I made is I recognize that. You know, I remember back at one time when we used to say a person was a know-it-all. You know, like, yo, they, they think they know everything or, the, you know, like they know it all. But I come to find out that it's a little more keener than that. And a person doesn't have to have, doesn't have to act like they know everything to be what, what I recognize as a know-it-all anymore. To me, I look at a know-it-all as a person who feels that they know enough. But they're, they're 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 complaining at the same time about how what they know is ineffective. Mm. So you know, so here you are. I know enough, but the things that you but at the same time you say you think you know enough, it, it, it's all ineffective and it's not it's not bearing any it's not bearing any fruit. To me, that's the real know-it-all. It's not the person who you can't tell nothing because you know. Well, let me tell you something about about blue science, and they say, well, I man, I already know about blue science. Blah, blah, blah. To me, that's not the know-it-all anymore. <laughs> that's not, to me, that I don't look at that as a know-it-all anymore. You know, you can't tell them nothing like that. To me, the know-it-all is the person who thinks that I know, I know all I need to know. And here you are saying you know all you need to know, but, there, the, but right, right behind that, I hear you complaining about how this isn't working and how that isn't working. And and you don't at any time connect the fact that you really don't know you don't really know enough to make that happen or make that effective. You know. But what you know what's so funny about everything you're saying, like, wow, Bob? What's that? Is that it's exactly the sentiment behind what Bruce said when he said mm -hmm. 
<laughs> all knowledge, all knowledge is self knowledge. Mm. Mm. Now, an intelligent mind is an inquiring mind. So, because going back, because uh, Swab said something about a person not not thinking they know enough and not being not being wise enough to ask questions. Wise men are always asking questions, even about mm -hmm. shit they know, because it allows you to, in a sense, go into that self that Shock is talking about. And do some exploration. When we start, when we stop exploring, we become inflexible because one of the big things that Bruce Lee was on was being very flexible. Shaka did a quote this okay. morning mm -hmm. that is one of Bruce Lee's most famous quotes about being like water, being subtle, uh, being subtle, and being like water, and being and maintaining that flexibility even in our minds. Because once we start thinking that we know enough. Once we stop inquiring, once we start accepting what's out there, right, we become, we limit ourselves. This is why Bruce Lee broke out of the, the styles that was out there. Because it's like those mm -hmm. styles became prisons. Because you, he started noticing that people start thinking in certain ways. And they thought, like you said, they thought they knew enough. But, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, they couldn't answer the question of the ass whoopings. That they was receiving from other styles. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me ask you this. Do you think that it was necessarily a different style or a different branding for that style? Because you know what his movement was. The same thing that, that caused him his death. What? I, I think is that, that, is that his, elders, his elders did not want him to teach Americans their sacred craft. Ah, man, listen. I right, listen. Listen. I. Cause you know the you know the problem. Let me tell y'all something before y'all go off in there. You know the problem I find with with every pop culture, and when I say every pop culture, I mean I, I tell people in any genre when you get around a bunch of people, there's a there's a it has its own pop culture. You know what I mean? I don't care. It could be you know we could be talking African dance, right? Right. And you get around a bunch of people, and you get around a bunch of people in the African dance community, and you look around and you'll be like, "Wait a minute, it's a pop culture in this community." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And the thing I think about, and the thing that I think about pop culture, period, is pop culture to me is always trying to skip over putting the work in. That's really to me. That's all pop culture is for me now. It's when it's whenever. There's a collective body of people trying to skip over the work, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically because to me, ain't no, there's no pop culture about you getting out there and building a house. I don't care. And as a matter of fact, I don't care how many people build a house because it requires so much effort and time and patience and, and, and know-how and, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing, there's nothing pop culture about you getting out there and, and building a house, especially if you're doing it with your hands and you're doing it, you know, with, with, with your mind and all that type of stuff. So with that being said, I think that a cat like Bruce Lee was, 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 was trying to, he was, he was trying to attack pop culture while using pop culture at the same time. It was, it was, you know, it, it was, it was very ingenious. Because you're like, okay, I'm a pop culture figure, but at the same time, you know, when you when you talk to me or you check me out, I'm letting you know that, yo, this, you know, you gotta you gotta break out of pop culture because pop culture is really it's a prison and it's a trap, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's why, like right now, to me, I told people, I said that's the reason why they call they don't even call hip hop music hip hop music anymore. You mostly got what they call trap music. They call it trap music, and the reason why it's trap music is because it's only one one style, one way, and when you get caught up in it, you're trapped. You're mentally trapped. You're, and as a matter of fact, the people who make it are trapped in the mind, so that they're just expressing themselves, and we call that trap music. Mm. You, you know, know what? what there's, a, there's some science behind what you're saying, man. Mm -hmm. and, and very, very simply put, you know how they say that if you if you allow 
uh, if a pregnant woman listens to classical music, then her child would be a genius. Mm-hmm. You've heard that. The, yeah, I've heard that the, the piece is behind that is that classical music is mostly written as through compositions, meaning that there is very little repetition. Absolutely. So, That's jazz music, too. Yeah, jazz music, too. In the same mm-hmm. study it's been done yeah. for jazz, well, the same yeah. thing has been proven. Now, now so well, hold on, hold on. Jazz, yeah, I love it. Jazz, jazz is yeah. classic. Oh. That's just, I mean... We talking about Western yes, classics, yes. so this but, is but the more that you get into the pop form, the more repetition that happens. Yeah, and the, the more, more you, the get, more you get into a repetition, and things start to turn into literally start to turn off into a ch- monosyllabic things like that. You know, you got person, you got people that damn, they're basically chanting, "Hey there, yo, hey there." You got person, persons basically chanting a hook and a, and, and some stuff, and the, and the beat is just doing the same thing over and over again. And it's almost like a, it's like a trance. You're creating trance music. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And it, and and it's kind of you know, and the purpose of being in a trance and all that. Like I said, it's still that's trap music, bro. That's what the yeah. that's trap music. You know what I'm saying? You know the other music when you start talking about jazz and classical, it's to inspire something new. That's what happens when you don't when you don't know where the next note is going to go. Your mind isn't allowed to get complacent. Right. And the thing goes back to what I said to you earlier about you know uh, misery follows a man who who um, thinks he know enough, who walks around and thinks he knows enough, while none of it works. You know what I'm saying? So I think all of this all of this tied in to where. You know, that it's thinking about what Bruce said now. Think about what Bruce said now and what we've all said. I, I just want to leave y'all with this, man. I thought that this was one of the most incredible things I've heard. Uh, way back in the 90s when I went and seen the movie Rhyme of Reason for the first time for all my hip-hop heads. And I went and seen Rhyme of Reason. Can, y'all can hear me still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I went to see Rhyme of Reason. And they had Nasir on there talking about growing up in Queens and how hard it was on his mother and 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 the ghetto and this, this, that, and the third. But now, you know what I'm saying? My Illmatic album is, you know, it 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 it, it, it went platinum or whatever it did, go. And, you know, now I'm out here and I'm torn and I'm doing this and doing that. He said, but you know what? Even though I'm doing all this, man, he said... I feel real bad because I feel like I need to get back in school, man. He said, I said, I feel like I'm not learning enough right now. I feel like I'm I'm, I'm, wow. I'm lacking knowledge. He said, I'm lacking knowledge. And I swear, man, I don't care what nobody said. I said, this is the dopest part of the movie right here. Well, you got a dude that, you got a dude that has pop culture at his grasp right now telling you he feels insufficient because he doesn't know enough. I said, man, you can't stop this dude right now, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But that's, that's the way, that's the, you talk about inquisitive mind. Man, dude, Nas was on a major film when he could have been talking about how he got it going on and, and this and that. And you mean to tell me on a major film, you want to tell everybody you need to be in school right now? Come on, man. I ain't heard nobody do nothing like that or similar to that since, man. Mm. That was, that was, that, that's what I'm, man, come on, man. You ain't got to tell nobody nothing like that. You ain't got to do that, man. You got pop culture at your grasp. You can get on the telephone right now and make calls that brothers wish they could make. And you mean to tell me, man, you gonna get on film and talk about, man, I need to go back to school? I got that's answer. what I'm talking about. I got now, y'all, y'all, y'all tell me what y'all tell me what part of pop culture motivated that. Well, zero. Hey, hey, zero. hey, and then but then they go back to Nasir's dad. I mean, Nasir's dad was a, a jazz musician. You understand, you understand uh-huh. what I'm saying? Exactly. Why Kim? Why Kim's family? That all they played was jazz, jazz music, right? You know what I'm saying? Come and on, man. Right. Y'all let me know when you see a trap. Let me know when you see some a trap. A trap. Let me know when you see uh 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 uh. When I well, I'm gonna just do it like this. I told my my peeps the other day. 
I said, what you classify as a nigga, what they classify as a nigga, I said, when is the last time you seen a nigga pull up blasting jazz music loud? <laughs> What's up, T.I. Andre? When have you seen, when is the last time you seen that? Man, I wish you would cut that jazz music down, man. God damn. <laughs> but that's part of the trap because, um, Chaka, Chaka. It's, nah, man, he not gonna, he not gonna do he that. Gonna do because it. it's not, that's not a part of the trap, man. And then that, Chaka, Chaka used to talk about how, how this music moves in a constant loop, like you said, keeping you trapped, while jazz yeah. and other type of music keep get you like on a wave, moving you in yeah, a certain it's, direction. It's, it's, a it's, a tempt, it's a tempting to free you, man. It's, it's a tempting. Right. Every, every, twist and, every twist and turn, it's a t I'm not telling you you're going to get free. I'm just letting you know that it's attempting to free you. And then also... One of the things that they took away is the live music piece because one thing oh, about jazz, what happens, what happens is this. Now we get looped into a love supreme. We get looped into these other things because every time I play is the same thing. But when John Coltrane was alive, he never played love supreme the same way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm -hmm. you would go to mm -hmm. a show and you would be listening and you would hear something new that would spark something new within you because you see this artist growing and you grow with the artist. Right now, we can't grow with our artists. Our artists are no longger the vanguard now, of... You're talking about they're Coltrane. Not, they're not, Let me say something about Coltrane. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All I'm saying is that you can no longer, you can no longer grow with the artist because you, we're stuck. We're stuck with, with, with them right now and where they were when they recorded this 15 years ago or last week. You go to a show now, they're going to put on the same music. This motherfucker going to come out and do the same exact song. You have exactly. very few. You have right, very few. Right. Here, like one of, the now, reasons, one of the reasons that KRS-One get alive in shows is that when KRS-One get up, you don't know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? A, a real man. live hip-hop artist... When they get up there, you don't know what to expect that's going to come out in those lyrics. That's what's, that's, that's hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? That's hip-hop. Look here, shock about the speech, y'all, but I just want to give y'all a, a little commercial, little commercial break. For all y'all out there who have never, are, are not hip to cold train, uh, there's a documentary called Chasing Train. Y'all should go look at it, check it oh, out. Oh, my God. I don't want to put that out there. Listen, oh, I, man, you listen here, Shaka, while you're getting all pumped up. I'm trying to tell the folks to at least go watch a documentary on the man if you ain't if you ain't hip to Cold Train. Go watch Chasing Train. You'll enjoy it. Now I'm going to let Shaka get back to his thing. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something, man. And if you're getting the, <laughs> get the train... You got to get into, like, there's one thing that Miles said that Don Cheeto had to put in the movie. And once you understand modal jazz, this man said, I was born modal. <laughs> when you understand how, he said, I was born modal. <laughs> oh, wow. In different modes. In wow. different modes. You know what I mean? And the mode is wow. like that whatever whatever key you in, number one through eight, whichever one of those you put as the root changes the whole style of the way that you're playing in that key. Mm. Because because every every few turns on the uh you, you know, you got half 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 note twice in a sequence, but mostly with all whole notes in a major scale, right? Only right. only between the three and the four and the seven and the eight are half tone. So when you take the when you take the seven and you put that down at the root, you change the placement of all of those half tones. So it sounds so different. Man, Miles said I was born motor. Mm. So get <laughs> yeah, and we we man we that's a whole different conversation. But getting back to Coltrane, I want you to understand this. 
Coltrane, at one point in his career, was a heroin addict. And in between shows, he would hock his horn to go get his fix. All right? Music. Music saved his life. When he started getting into the spiritual frequency and his uh, and the science of his uh, of his compositions, it was that vibration in his music that helped him wean from heroin, and that is the rootedness that relationship. So his him and his music, in other words, hot Tim, are symbiotic. Say again. Mm. I said him, Coltrane, and his music. The relationship between them was symbiotic. Symbiotic. Word. 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 So, and don't, mm-hmm. don't you try to slide in no June commercial on this shit, uh, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I already know you about to go to, you know. But I mean, really, see, and this is this is this is what this yeah, he, is. He this, bought the, he bought he bought the mess around and uh, a sitting the. You know, you know, he will ascend or transcend if you let him. That's why that's that's my homeboy Shaka. Hey man, I gotta go do some more crazy stuff. I just want to chime in with y'all briefly, man. But uh, before you go, before you go, where can the people find you at? Cause I understand you do shows too. So where where can the people find you at? Yeah, man. Nah, no, 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 no. Don't even tell them yet. Hey, Swab, before you get off of this line, man. What up? Can we get a little thirty-two? Y'all want freestyle, a little free, little free right quick? Yeah, hit us up. A little free. Okay, let's do it like this, y'all. I got some crazy beat playing in the background. Let's do it like this. Now, yo, bro games, it ain't no thing for me to go off in my mental like I'm cold trained. Get to playing notes, the type of stuff that you quote. You know that I'm dope. And what's crazy about it, this ain't nothing that I wrote. But, yo, I hope y'all are listening. Suave is a rapper that's been known for battling and riding rappers like Michelin Tires. This a rap messiah that's ready to crucify ya. Buy up, but keep lying for any liar. Don't you understand that? Don't say that you don't believe because you're not really a buyer. But if you's a buyer, you should try to type a lyric that I'm putting together off of my head. Transcend any man can spin if he wants to try to lyrically justify it. Put him to the sky and I am flying. I'm I am looking through the cellular, cellular, cellular. It's the predator, etc., etc. The killer of any form of competitor, you'll understand I'm much better, bro. But I'm just having some fun. I'm coming off of the tongue, out of the lung. This is very high strung. The people know how I come. It's suave, y'all. I parlay, y'all. I'm a rough ombre. Now, people, what I say is my homeboy, Shaka, a true hip hopper. Star Wars, he got the fourth worse than Chewbacca. Aka, Aka, Blacka, Flora, Mr. Burbidi, Burbidi, back for busting my rap. Real hip hop. I feel like I'm West Coast walking around through the hood in flip flops. But I ain't trying to get shot. I'm just getting knocked in my pocket. I spit flows that's macroscopic, making these hood rappers sound microscopic. Difference between me and them, I flip topics. Just like Bruce Lee or Harry Lee Bruce. Swap A, y'all. People out that I introduce myself back to the scene. Seen back what I mean. Peen choice for the scene. A fool to be with the stream. Just like I'm coming together, flipping up off of the machine. Everybody goes thump with the stream. Every time that I redeem myself, off of the head, I'm a throw of bread. That's what they said. I be spitting flows, riding like a moped, trying to make more bread. Off of my pocket, once again, it's the swapster. The man with the plan. Rapper in my upper hand, representing the whole cleave. Where can y'all find me? Give me a second, y'all. Rewind me. No, better yet. Remind me. Remind me. Yo, I'm like the light in the sun that blinds me. But yo, y'all can catch me off Euclid Avenue, having shoes. Ever heard of the swaths of flipping birds and birds and bad birds and mad words like a mad nerd? Or better yet, bad words doesn't matter. Subject matter, I cook it like cake batter and to make matters worse. Y'all might even catch me in Cleveland on Miles Avenue, 131st. But yo, let me come back again and swab baby walk in the hood like African selling dope CDs, y'all, no drug trafficking. Keep it though. Secret though, ancient secret flow. Off the head, it's my homeboy, Mr. Hasbury.
as an asbury. My extraordinary vocabulary is sort of scary. I love sending rappers to the mortuary. Of course, it's very off of the head. Thoroughly put it together, you can see it's me. Through the blessed spell, my CDC, L-E-V-E. L-A-N-D, no one N-Z, can't the N-V me, I will N-T-3. But I'm not talking about three bullets, I'm talking about off my head, I represent to the fullest. My gun click, pop pow, watch me pull it out of my line, off my nerve, as my lyrics travel up and down my spine. Thoughts is intertwined, off of the mind, come off my tongue in the form of a line. Y'all ain't gonna listen, so let me rewind. I said they travel up and down my spine, head up to my mind, come off my tongue in the form of a line. Intertwined, twine with a spine, with a spine, seeking them gun with a spine. How I rap so good, y'all, it come from the divine. Smoking off these flying, swing with a form with these flying, catch me later on, chilling at my house like a strong. Flows I combine, sit in my chair, then recline. Go on to my thoughts, then I rewind. What happened today? It's a simile. Seek me, remember me, remember me, remember me. And then I go back off into my memory, and I remember me on the telephone. Man, you got to come home. With this because he ain't gonna stop. Man, we having fun, son. You know I can't be outdone. Y'all know the outcome. It's worse than going up and with a gang bang or with a shotgun. Yo, I can't be outdone. I'm having fun and I'm done. I'm out, son. Holla at y'all later, man. Peace, God. It's Peace. on, God. Peace. So. Yeah. So we had a we had we had a we had a lovely conversation. We only we only did one today. Cause I'm I'm about to shut it down. Cause you know I gotta get up. We gotta get up for that toast. Lift your glass. Mm. Lift your glass. Hour later than we usually is too. Wow. Hour hour later, family, and we already at we at fifty six minutes and forty six seconds. Listen, listen. When we come together, wow. when we come together, we gonna get that information, and we gonna we we, we, we this is like a real warfare. We hitting and we running, right? You know what I'm saying? So, family, I want to thank everybody that took the time to stop in. I see Sister Teandra out there. Of course, Shaka. I see Miss Navita out there. I see Brother Anubis out there. I see CeeLo out there. And there's somebody else out there. Sister Jackie was on the on for a little while. Family, I want to thank each and every last one of you and let y'all know that I love you. And I want to thank Shaka for one once again bringing an amazing guest and freestyle. I mean, brother freestyle for what? You know what I'm saying? He freestyled for Ever. what? You know what I'm saying? You know, and so that means I'm gonna have to have him and Dame on the show at the same damn time. And I ain't oh, gonna say God. shit. I ain't gonna have to say shit. I'm just gonna be like, oh, uh, why don't y'all do a rhyme? You know what I'm saying? Collaborate. Right. Right. We don't know no battle. We want some collaboration. You know what I'm saying? We got enough yeah. battles going on in our community. So, family, uh, now you know. Okay, so I want to thank everybody, Shaka. Here's to you. I'm drinking some some of that ambrosia water. I call it, you know, just I a little think. bit, just a little bit of ambrosia. You know, I'm, you know, I'm slumming right now. Just a little bit of ambrosia, a little bit of water. You know what I'm saying? Hydrating, you. family. Drink you some water before you go to bed. Take you a breath before you go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Because pretty soon I got to start doing a workout now. Um, just mark your date. You know what I'm saying? I just just a little just a little see for you. May 19th, Columbus, Ohio, 3500 Refugee Road. May 19th, we will be having the Malcolm X Fe uh, Malcolm X Festival. Listen, I'm gonna keep you tuned, but I just want you to lock the date in. May 19th. It's on a Kaumba for those that speak the language. I want to see my whole family in place. I want to see all my daily toasters, at least the ones that live within at least two hours. You know what I'm saying? Because some of y'all are too far away. But I want to see you up in a place. Let's support the vendors. Let's support the venue. Let's support each other. Hey, one one thing before you one thing before you go, bro. Mm-hmm. Yo, I don't care if it's during Juneteenth, or well, it makes more sense for it to be during Juneteenth. But that spot that you was at, off down Allen Creek, that uh, that party center with all that yard. Uh huh. Yo, we need to have a nation builders gathering and invite tribes, beyond tribes, and be able to uh, you know, get them to to uh, 
you know, be able to bring they bring they merch, bring whatever it is that they bring, and just have like a little uh, conference slash camp slash whatever we want to, you know. Deal oh, with. we but, ain't, we ain't, we ain't got to go all the way out there, family, because check this out. This is one of the things we're working on: a monthly market. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All, already got the spot. We're going to be able to do it when it's warm. We're going to be able to do it outside and have some activities going on on the inside. And then when it's cold, we're going to be able to do it on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Listen, because this is what's, the, this is what's crazy, Shaka, that you brought that up, right? Think about African culture. Now, this is what I want you to take away from it. What happens to African culture when you take away the market? What happens to African culture when you take away the market? The market. Are you asking me? I, I'm just throwing it out there for everybody. I want everybody to think about African culture without market. Actually, I'm going to ask the question like this. Can you have an African culture without a market? Hmm. Are you saying market or marketing? Market. Market. M A R K E T, just what you was talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Commerce is a, is a part of society. Not only the commerce. See, what we got to understand what happens at the market is exchange of information, development of relationships. Different groups come together to share their wares and trade amongst each other so that they can learn from each other and evolve. We evolve by developing markets. Name an African yes. culture yes. without yes. a I market. I, 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 I totally get it. And and right now that you bring up market, man, and I know you was closing, but it's important. When we speak of market, the biggest market, look, earth. Earth is a market for souls. Mm. Earth is a market for souls. And our enemies are our Elevators. Does that make sense to you? You said uh, the earth is a market for souls and what? Our enemies are our elevators. Our, oh, ooh, and our enemies are our elevators. Mm, I hear you. I hear you. But since Tiandra put a market equals gathering and exchange, and she wanted me to know, I typed that before you said it. Right, see, because what happens? <laughs> see, but see, but Chaka, you was talking about this on your show. How music harmonizes, right? So you know, we start off yeah. with music. We have a little music in there, and we we listening to the same things. We we probably reading some of the same stuff. We think it's, and we're starting to think the same thoughts as we get up. We start pouring libations, and we start doing some of the same things. <clears throat> Excuse me. We start yeah. instantly communicating with each other. The thought is not even, the thought is not one of ours. The thought is floating in the ether between us. And we're able to smash yeah. that shit down, family. And the PC is, yeah. when we, when, as we get more developed with this and become more powerful with it and keep it pure, keep the fuckery out. Because fuckery blocks all the channels. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And we handle, we handle, not. I don't even want to call it business because business only brings up the, 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 the wrong aspect. When we handle the market of it, the gathering and exchange right. of it, right? When we mm -hmm. handle when we handle the market aspect of it, not just, you know, so you because you can have a market without necessarily having money because we could trade shit too. So when you develop the market, it allows for us to gather and it takes some of the bullshit out. Right. So, family, right. I want y'all to understand. Um, August, no, what I say? May, May nineteenth, May nineteenth, Kaumba. That Kaumba, we having the Marcus, uh, the Malcolm X Festival. Be looking out for the for the market, right? And some of the other things because in a minute, like I said, we are going to be able to bring people into. To 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 um to Giame as well as the Tawi family village family is is about to go down in Columbus. It's about to go down, and I'm trying to let y'all know. 
You know what I'm saying? And it's going to, I mean, we are going to build something that our children. See, because this is what I want y'all to understand. We talking about these holidays. We talk about Juneteenth. We talk about Kwanzaa. We talk about the Malcolm X celebration. We talk about setting up other holidays. We talking about setting up a market. We're talking about building up a village. Family, I need y'all to understand that some of our young people, some of our children, if we set this up right, will be eaten off of this. Not in a negative way. They will be able to make a positive living off of what we live, off of, off, of, off of our labors. Now, we might have to struggle. But our, see, and, and see, and that, for me, that's cool. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been struggling my whole damn life, family. So I ain't got nothing, I, I ain't got nothing to lose right now. So, but I want to build something so that one day Cleve, Sasha, or Gina, or, or Wisdom, or any of the 600 kids that's sitting up in Millennium that has the insight, that has the inspiration, could come up with an idea and bring it to a place where they will be able to share their ideas with other people and exchange value. That's what markets are about. You know what? And just as you're talking about that, Hot Tim, I'm going to mention this. And I'm, 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 a, I'm not going to say too much about it because this is a very sensitive piece because it's my life's work. But here in Cleveland, I am in a place where with the right individuals, with the right Ocean's Eleven, I would be with an acquisition, a historical high school site, and transform it into a transgenerational artist community, starting with the elders first. So a retirement community with the transitional living operation for the wards of the state right. to the, uh, you know, to, so we, we got a whole bunch to talk about, but I'm saying that we have so much more work to do. Oh, and that's man. what makes me anxious at this point, because I cannot move forward without an effective team. And right now, I mean, right now, especially since the word is kind of getting out about that building, nobody ever wants it until you want it. You ever, right. you, you, oh, you ever really realize oh, that? That's that's the way. It, that's the way it always is. That's the way. That's that's where our enemies move, family. And it's beautiful. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but hey, we gonna we gonna we uh, Sister Tiara just says, I love our family, our market. We have a whole bunch to talk about. So, family, on that note, I need to remind you that you are now listening to Giami Journey Media. This has been Tribal Quotes, and this is a Heart of a Simple production. When we strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigms. And I will catch y'all in the morning. Please like and share, because I'm about to blow up those paradigms. I'm out! Peace out, fam. All right, all right, Spreaker, we are gone. Y'all have a great night.